here uh, we are going to check a uh, link to data sets now where we are going to see how to uh, work on data sets to actually read data through link right? so we have already created a program to uh, you know retrieve data from a database through edio.net right and we have used sql adapter which is sql data adapter and sql data adapter obviously need a data set to fill right so i'm going to create a new class in my link project so let me call it as a uh, link to ds that we got as link to data set right so here what I can do, I'll, I'm going to copy this main method which I have created in my ADO.net. Save some time. Now, so here I'll have to add SQL. So let's get plenty right here. So either if you remember this uh, namespace, right, you can, uh, you can go ahead and create or else if you don't remember the namespace, no worries at all. So wherever you have a right active on that, then you have option of resolve, right? Either you can actually import the library or namespace or you can directly change this. So it's always better if you are using uh, multiple classes of the same namespace, always uh, try to import them or, or uh, use them in here, right? Wherever you are getting, you can right click and resolve them, right? So save it. Now you can see everything is fine. So here what we have done, it's a pretty straightforward which we have used radio.net. So I've just used the connection string to the college database which we uh, already have, right? Uh, and then I've created a connection, a radio connection, and I've checked it and then I used the SQL adapter, which is SQL data adapter, to uh, run a store process, right? I just copied the same program. Now you can see I'm using data set which is filling my data set. And what I'm doing is I'm just giving the table, right? If I have multiple tables, right? Because a data set can hold <coughs> multiple data tables, right? So first let, let's run and see how this program is uh, working and then we'll go ahead and do the things. So I hope this is the only uh, main statement we have. Let's run this. There are other link to do is one and also link to let me remove this static from here so that we can maintain a single main object on this. Okay. What happened here? So it seems we got some error. Let me just print this outside the program and let me also. Says uh, exception have the exception of the SP. Oh, okay, okay. In SP, I think we have modified the SP with one, one more flag, right? So that you remember. But in our program, when we actually created this program, right, um, we didn't add this flag. Okay, that's why. Let me add that flag to So, which is a separate, uh, you know, parameter. If you remember, a separate command parameter which you have. So this has to be same as this, so let me copy this flag, paste it over here, and let me just say why. Anyways, we are not using the flag anymore. And you can see initially what I'm doing is I'm actually uh, trying to retrieve only one data set, right? So a single data set will be retrieved I, as I've commented. This. So let me run this, right? You can see there is only one data set and in here I'm passing role number and student name. So which means among the students, right, among the students, whatever student name or role number I pass, so I'll be getting that specific uh, record message. Right? Now here, let's run this and see how it is working. Now you can see a specific reading data is working. Right. Now, so 
so this we have done through loop, right? We have actually uh, read everything through loop. Uh, now, let's do one thing. So every data table, whatever we have, right? Let's say we have to combine few tables and do some other stuff. Let me comment this and different things. So let's take, let me take a uh, different data table. Let me call uh, DT students. Fine. So I'm going to take it as data set dot tables of right? I know that the first table I have is of students table. Right? And if you need to get other things like academics and all, yeah, you can get it, but we'll, we'll check we'll check that uh, a bit later. Fine. So here now let's see how we can actually use our link uh, to connect with this. Now you can see here that we have actually uh, we were actually uh, doing I mean getting the data right for each query by right? let's say we have four and five and you know different options of getting right uh, where I've called different numbers like roll number four and, and we have used so many things. Which means I'm actually if I want some other uh, guy roll number five, then again I have to run the same as the which, uh, which again gets triggered and then it will take, obviously it's going to take some time or some it is a costly with costly operation to do in uh, SP and get the data. Okay. So first let's see whatever we have let's run that and then we'll see uh, how that should reduce this with link. Right. So let me call graph as uh, out one as output one. Let me take from so let me take it as R, which is each row in the table. The table name is DT Scrubs. Select R. Right? Now this is the first scenario where we are actually getting all the details of the data table. Right? Now you are actually reading uh, things from data table and printing them. Now here you can see there is an error. Now why we are getting error? Because as we know that a link is something which can read generic innumerable, right? Innumerable uh, generic types, which means we should be able to iterate through the objects. But here, data table is something which link doesn't understand if you directly load. So for that data table, you have to use something called as innumerable, right? So this method will actually make each and every row as a innumerable object here and later. Right? Now you can iterate through. So each where I turn in your query out one. So this will give you specific rows, I mean specific row which we have in students uh, uh, data table. Right? Uh, we know that there are only uh, one row available right where uh, the roll number and name I'm considering we will also remove this roll number and uh, you know student name uh, dependency here and we will see uh, different things there. Right? So whatever we have let's uh, print that. Now while printing now this row contains different fields right now you can see one row contains different fields roll number student name address and all. Now here I'm not using my data uh, I mean uh, data model here like entity model I'm not using if I was using entity model, it, 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 would, it would have been very easy to read students and uh, iterate through each and every uh, member of that model class. But here, no, I don't have that situation here. Then what to do? Yes, you have an option to read each and every uh, field. So let me write that as, let's say you have an item dot, you have an option called field, right? Which field you want to read? Let's say here, as I'm reading the complete data set, right, which means I'll be getting everything because I, it's a select star, which will give me uh, each and every row in a sequence. Now you can see roll number is there. Now make sure you follow the same specific data types here. A roll number is there, which is of in time. So here in field, now you can see it, 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 it actually requires you to provide a type. So my type is in. And then you have to provide uh, an option to map to that column. 
it, you can provide it a column or an index, right, or a name of a column name, right, you have different options as such. So let's give zero, now which is my column index. Or what you can do, you can also give, mention your name, which is the roll number. I can do that. So I can do it as, it's always good to give name of columns, right. Uh, don't go with the uh, indices because if you actually mention index and tomorrow if I'm actually changing my query there, right, then all your program you have to change. So uh, better way is to use a correct column, right. Let's say this roll number and then I have item dot p, right, of let's say I have something called string, right, which is the student name. Make it as uh, let me copy the column name so that it don't make any mistake right here. Right. So this is one uh, element I have, which is student. Now this should be separated by let's say this space. I'll just print one more item. Field of string element of type, let's say, I'm going to take a simple search here. Right, we have some of this. Now here I'm printing each and every field. Right, we have an item. Now, as I'm getting a complete row set here, right, I'm going to the field, right, where I'm getting it. So let's run this and see how it works. Now you can see, actions has one now, and we are able to read the roll number, student name, and the address. Right. Now, let's do, let's move ahead uh, a bit. Let's say in my SP, what I'm going to do, I am trying to get all students. Anyways, I'll pass this, but doesn't matter. I'm not concerned with this. So let me run this SP. So I've executed this SP, which means it will give me all students as So let's run this program and see what we get. Now you can see it will get everything, right? Which means in your data set you have all the student information, whatever is necessary for you. Let's say in this data set, if you want to run two, four, five, and eight, right? Now you are you are good to go. Right, because we have a complete data set. Now, let's go ahead and see the next option to retrieve a specific row using link. Right, let me put a link to here. Right. So let me call out that. Let's say output two. We have from. Let me call it as R in. Uh, data DP students here as in level. Now we normally say select R let's say. So before that we can add a condition where. Now we are going to get where and we are going to apply where condition on right some certain sort of fields. Let's say here I want to get uh, data uh, which is I mean a uh, roll number greater than some three let's say. Let's call it. So type of let's say I want a roll number which is this, right? This will give me index so data number. Now again, now you can see that this field is of type 8, right? And what I'm saying, I'm actually asking is it to return the complete set where my roll number should be greater than 3. Now you can see there is we actually got a condition. Now this is something which we are applying to my data set indirectly through the data table, right? Because data table is an integral part of your data set uh, once you fill it using your SQL data data. Fine. So here you can see if you run this student, so greater than 3 in the sense you will get all these elements. So let's run this step and then go and see. <coughs> Yeah, we 
get such uh, such query queries also. Remember again, whenever you are writing any link, that is called as a query, link query. Whenever you actually try to retrieve data, then that is some that is the execution of your link query. So now you can see the greater um, greater than three. Your you we got a now you can expand your uh, condition if you want. Let's say you want one more pair where your r dot field of in the game, right? And your row number is uh, let's say less than some six. Right, if you remember this is same as mentioning your this field and this. both the same. So first let's see the and operation. Let's see how it works first and then we'll see multiple pairs. Now you can see 4 and 5 which is greater than 3 and less than 6. We get only 2. Now you can see that I'm actually I'm not using the entity here, I'm using a direct ADO components. So this is something which is linking your link to a data set or a link to SQL components. Right? So instead of and let me use uh, one more pair right? and run this. You can see it will give you the same option. Right? Of retrieving. Uh, so this is where we have uh, multiple where conditions where we are actually getting specific data but complete row set. Right? Now let's go a step ahead. Now this time what we want is we want to get specific columns. I don't want a complete row set. I want a specific column. Let me call it as our three from R let's say in our DD students as an available we have uh, select now, if you want specific case, you can define that. Let's say I want only name. You can go ahead with string of, you can give you a column name. Now, column name is my student name, which means this will give only student name across all. First, let's print this and then we'll apply some conditions over here. Right? For, we have for each uh, where item in out. Now you can see it returns only one single string, right? Which means you will not, you don't have to um, actually get a sub or call sub methods of item. You can directly print that. Console dot right now. That's the right. That's on this. And you can see if you have all the names, right? You get read and print. Now let's apply a simple condition here again. Okay. Whatever we have seen. So let's uh, move it by order by. Now which one you want to order by? As we are selecting same field, I can use the same field here and I'll say ascending. You don't have to actually exclusively say ascending. By default, if you are actually providing the order by, it will normally sort. Let's run this. And you can see. Right, Arun, Ben, Kiran, Ram, Ram, and so on. This will be sorted in the second one. Right. Let's try the group by. Right, we have group. What to group? Group all R's by. And on which condition to group? Let's say I want to group by all the student names. Right. Uh, which is. Uh, Now you can see here, I I just missed this namespace, right? Uh, the link namespace, that's why it was not recognized in my group by. Now you can see I just wrote group by in some separate fashion. Now see here, uh, 
make sure you understand this statement whatever I have written right now. Right? So this is something which we actually went as simple complex one. What I am doing is I am actually trying to get a enumerable values CD. Clearly we are we all know. We are we are getting the data all those from students, right? And I am assigning it and I am getting the data set. Now this will return an enumeration of some defined string or something. On top of the load I am doing, I am actually grouping them by grouping them by T. What is T? T is nothing but the value, whatever it is written. Let's run and see what it will return. Uh, if T is written, okay, okay. Now group by will always give you a key, right? Now you can see we got uh, exclusive item search where I was using group by. Now, do I need to do in, the, in, in this complex way? Let me write this query again as an output and see whether we can write group by directly. So, I'm not going to use uh, this. I'm going to use group here and um, group R by this field. That's it. Nothing else. So, here I'm writing out 4 and let's print this out 4 here. You can see it's the same, right? I'm uh, you know doing some ascending order, right? By some days now. And also what I'm doing, I'm also doing uh, group by. Group by on after getting everything. So this is something which will prepare my data and then I'm going to buy. But here you can see what I'm doing while preparing itself and grouping the data. Both are same. But you can see I have, you know, it, it gives you more flexible way as you write queries. So that's the reason why as you practice more link operations, writing more and more link queries, right, you will you'll, you'll actually get handy with the link. So this is something how you get multiple you know operations which are done order by and same way if you want you can also join something. So let's see the join operation. Sorry, let me close this. Now we uh, make sure that no, we have already seen this operation, but this is something which is specifically we are looking at link to SQL which is linked to ADO.NET or specifically linked to uh, we normally call data set right whatever we are doing we are doing on uh, data set here if you have a entity model we know that it will give you a direct model but this is something which is different right so let me uh, rephrase this SP as select star from students and I'll do something on uh, academics so that academics and students are connected, right? So let me write program here to select uh, star from academics, right? So which means it will actually give me two different tables: students table and academics table. So let me run this and get back here. So here I have DT students. Let me create a new data table as a DT academics, which is my view star table of one. Now let's see how we can actually get specific data, right? Now let me write, let me call it as 5, we have from R in, or let me take it as students, right? Let me take S in DT students dot as a new level and the join is something uh, different here so either you can use join or let's say you can use from again academics in dt academics and new level right where we have s dot field sorry we have s dot field of in your roll number right uh, let me copy that roll number so which will give me the roll number is equal to a dot p of p whatever number right so this is my condition on which I want to get and then select here let's say 
answer is given in your head. I'm not going to specific things and trying to set everything. But here, whenever you are actually uh, doing some S, right? If you say S, then you'll get only students uh, details, right? You won't be getting academic details. Now, how can you create a new set? We know that if you want to create a new set out of multiple multiple sets, uh, you have to use new. New will create a new set for us. Now here, let's understand. So in new, what do we need? Let's say I want role. Now role is nothing but you. I can take it from s dot field now print. Now this is something which is different. Right? Now in, the, in our previous uh, model, we have seen. We can directly call a variable of the entity object, but here it's different. I'm taking load, let's say I want name, uh, which is test dot field student. I want a student name, right? And now these are variables which I'm creating exclusively for my new set. And let's say I want address and start being a student. So let me take this address column name. Okay, fine. So address, we are done with address. Now let's go to the academics. Now let's get marks. Now marks we are getting from A, not from S, right? So let's say A. Now whenever you are combining these two, right, which means they automatically get data specific to that role as well, right? We have a dot uh, field of, now let's go ahead and see what is the marks you have. What is the type of marks? Okay, everything is it here, right? So let's consider it and then we have the variable marks. So let me pop this on. And then leaves it. We have a dot field of in so which is a leaves. So we have created a specific set. Now this is also called as selecting many uh, selecting many records uh, based on customized you know uh, combination of tables. Now let's run this, uh, execute this. How can I execute? I can use a loop where I'm taking out 5. And you can see here whenever I try to get item, we have a console dot right line of, <coughs> let's say, it is item dot. When you click on dot, now you can see all the new details will come. These are new, sorry, new columns which we declare. Right? So let me create. Now role is done. Then you have name, and then you have address. Right, and then what else here? You have marks here. Right, and then you have leaves. So this is something which we are trying to write down. Let's run this and see how it works. Now you can see we got all the required. Now you can see for for the students who have got uh, academics, right? One, two, three, four, five. We actually got records only for them, and for remaining six, seven, eight, we didn't because they don't have record records specific to academics. So that's the reason why you can see here. Right? So that is how we normally use uh, here. And if you want to extend this, obviously you can extend till here. After one condition, you can go ahead with multiple conditions. This is again same. Let's say I'm going to take S dot field. Same. Let me copy this. Right? And say greater than some P. Then again, what you are doing, you are anyways combining this, but you are actually checking to get data, which is uh, on this. Right? You will get 4 and 5. Right? It will give you uh, data, which is 
So this is something which is a condition of selecting uh, many uh, in here. So this is how we normally work with data sets uh, linked to data sets. Now pattern is same. Whatever pattern we have seen, right? More if you want to use it for new uh, new uh, set, yes, you can directly use link in the same way. But only thing is, it's very important to understand the basics of link and how we normally do different operations, right? The main method which we have discussed in our previous class is something which should be common across all. Right? So this is your uh, link to data sets which we have and doing different operations based on your requirement. Now you can see we have queried only once, right? We have done uh, we have actually uh, queried only once, but we can see how many ways we tweaked our data and we got the things back. Right? So this is about link, uh, all the concepts which we have linked. So any, so as any variable, right, see here, what it actually does is, now we know that link basically is designed, right, for specific, for specific to generic type, generic types, generic types which can be looped on, right? Basically, it's like enumerable type is something which needs support, right? And enumerable in the sense which the data which you can actually be using. But here, when you say data table, right? So if you mention data table directly, our link doesn't understand that it contains rows and all. When you say enumerable, Automatically, what it does now you can see this enumerable as enumerable is an inbuilt function of the data table, right? Obviously, because this DD students is an object of data table. Now, whenever you use input as enumerable, what it does is it will automatically convert each and every row as a separate enumerable generic type row, right? And it will give with to link. Now, whenever you map R, now this R will be mapped to each row specific to that object now. Why do we need to do this? Because if you want to read data, right, let's say, see here you are reading field, right, now where, where, where did we get this field? Now this field is nothing but an enumeration object's method in that, right, where you are actually mentioning that yes, there is a, there is a, you know, there is a method called field, right, where you can actually give the type, what type of it is, as an argument, which is a column name, right. But normally if you go directly to the table, how can we read the table? The world is seen this, we can actually go row by row, right? Now if you want to read the table, so let's say it is data row, right? And you go from uh, dt students dot rows, right? Resolve it. Now in each row, how can we read cell? It is item of, see, you can do data column or index or anything, right? This is how we normally need data, right? Now this is something which is a property of loop, where you can directly give an index here or a column name. But this is not directly supported, right? Supported by link. That's the reason why for every set, in order to make every set or every, uh, you know, data source as such, not set, data source. It can be your XML data source or SQL data source or data set or, or anything compatible link I've got its own libraries being provided. For data table, it's as a number. Right? So which will actually make a link pass through each object so that on each object we can apply different conditions and we can actually write to the data. So that's the reason why we have add. Okay, fine. So this is about uh, link concepts.